All right, you open your multi-SIM software, you want to make a, a full wave rectifier. What that means is you want to convert AC to DC. From the menu, from the, the left corner here, when you, where you see the symbol of earth or ground, then you just uh, click on that and then you come to this, uh, these two drop-down menu. You have master the database there and you go to the second one, choose power sources, and power sources again and choose AC. I'm just going to choose AC power because we need that to go there. Then I need a ground for the multi-sim to work. You always need a ground. So you just put that there. And we need a bridge diode. So again, drop down, go to semiconductors or diodes here. And then you have uh, Diode. You can just make a bridge diode with four, four, four general purpose diodes or actually go to full wave bridge here and just pick one of those and just pick that. And I'm just going to pick the third one down there, drop down and then drop it there. Takes a bit of time and, and that's that. And then uh, I will need a load. So I will put a resistor there under the drop downs again, go to basic and on the resistors, just pick a one kilo ohm resistor for a load. And then I'll need later a capacitor. I'm just going to pick, you can pick a normal capacitor or electrolytic capacitor. I'm just going to pick an electrolytic capacitor. And uh, again, values, you can change the values later. Don't worry about the values. And drop it there. And also later, I'll need another uh, type of diode, which is called Zener diode. So you go on the diodes again and find Zener. And we'll pick One of these BZ58, five maybe. We'll just pick B Z X five A five dash B twenty four. I'll just pick that one. I'll need that later. So and I think that's all we need for uh, components. Uh, all I have to do is just rearrange those the way I want them and make space for my test instrument or oscilloscope. 
and right click on any of these components if you want them vertical, vertically or if you want them tend right click on any of these <coughs> you can right click on any of you can you can right click on any of these components and turn them uh, clockwise or anti clockwise if you want them vertically and uh, just sit them there and then also I need to add an oscilloscope oscilloscope you can find it on the right column here a two channel oscilloscope is good enough and I need to close this so you have a bigger space here and <coughs> now the full wave rectifier or bridge um, the way you discover or the way you identify the full wave rectifier or the bridge uh, here the way you identify which one connects to the AC which one is the input and which one is the output if you look at the diodes where you have the cathode and anode connected together like this end this jun junction and this junction cathode and anode connected together then these two are input and where you have anode and anode and then cathode and cathode, cathode then they, these are uh, output so anode and anode connected together uh, would be your output to the load so you can just straight away connect that and cathode, cathode and cathode connected together is also output so this is my output connected to the load and these two are my inputs so connected to my source of supply and ground you can just connect the ground here you could just leave it if you, if you don't want to but as long as you have a ground on the plane here without that it won't simulate and the voltage is too much I'll just drop it down to for now 24 volts and the frequency uh, 50 Hertz so this is my AC supply and then with this bridge diode we're converting it to DC and we can just see that without connecting these to other components we can see the waveform with the oscilloscope see how it works so you have two channels on the oscilloscope channel A channel B we want to um, allocate channel A for input and channel B for output just to compare the waveforms you could do it the other way but it doesn't matter for, for me I like to connect the channel A to input so you connect it to either side of the source that's that and then you connect this to the, this probe to the either side of the load or output and that there now because they're both red when you simulate it you'll see both waveforms red and we don't want that uh, if I just move this so it's separate um, we'll see them both red we want to see both of them different each one of them different colors so you can see which waveform is for which uh, input or output so uh, if you right click on one of these wires whether input or output I'm just going to right click on that and then go to segment color and choose a different color with that it changes the color of the wire and also when you simulate you'll see different color waveform which identifies that is for your output so red will be my input blue will be my output so if I double click on the screen of the oscilloscope you'll see something like this and if you simulate it you'll see this now uh, the waves are too big for the screen so I'll just change the, the scale of the voltage and um, so it fits in this in the screen and also what happens here because of the back, black background you might not see everything so I'll just connect and press this reverse then you have a white background it's going too fast again 
uh, if you press this normal or single here, then it just shows you a single um, waveform. And you have to make sure the input is on AC set and the output is in DC. And you can see the red waveform is a full sinusoidal or sine wave signal coming in and the blue is a full wave rectified DC. Half of the cycle, the blue cycle, is on top of the red or under the red and you can hardly see that. So if I just change the scale of one of the channels, then you can see better, maybe like this. You can see, uh, I'm not changing the voltage, I'm just changing the scale. So uh, the AC input coming in, full AC coming in, and full DC rectified waveform coming out to the output, to the load. This is a DC, but it's a varying DC. That means the voltage is varying from zero to maximum and down to zero and up. But it's never going to negative. That means it's still a DC. If it went down to negative, even a little bit, tiny amount, that would be AC. But because it's not going, it's never going down to negative, then it's a DC voltage, but it's not a very good DC. A perfect DC would be a straight line. We want to get to that. Uh, so the next thing we can do to get closer to that is connecting a, a capacitor to the output. Go to a normal capacitor. non-polarized capacitor, I mean, by that. And, and just, again, 10 microfarad capacitor should be fine to start. Uh, right, right click, rotate 90 degree, and then connect it to the load. And simulate that. You can see now, this is nice. So what's happened here, for, bring the scale back to what it was, then you can see better now. So as the red waveform, the input voltage is increasing to maximum, the capacitor rides on it. That means the capacitor starts charging to the full. When it gets to the maximum voltage, it charges almost fully. And then as the voltage of the supply drops down, then the capacitor starts feeding the load. So it, like, it, it works like another supply as the, it's just helping the supplies booster. And so the voltage of the supply as it's dropping down, and then the capacitor feeds the resistor. So at one point, the, the su supply is feeding the load and charging the capacitor. And then when the voltage goes down, the capacitor feeds the resistor or the load as well as the source and uh, then you have this kind of um, effect so it, it discharges into the load and then again voltage goes up and, and charges the capacitor and then it feeds to the load and then charges again feeds to the load discharges to the load charges discharges charges discharges and that's how that's how you, uh, you get this ripple effect so we went from a full, wave, full sinusoidal waveform or full sine wave, AC, to, I just disconnect that to show you, to this full wave rectified waveform, full wave, big bumps of DC, but uh, very much varying. And then from that, we reduce the big bumps to this, which is kind of ripple effect, they call it a ripple effect. And then now we need to connect a Zener diode to fix that, to bring it to a fixed voltage. Then we connect this uh, Zener diode there, and Zener diodes operate in a reverse mode. That means normally in general purpose diodes, cathode, this line, is connected to negative, and anode is connected to positive. Whereas Zener diodes, cathode is connected to positive, anode is connected to negative. And the purpose of that is usually for regulating the voltage and uh, fixing the voltage, usually, usually they're used. And so if I do that, 
uh, you get you still got problems here, and or the, the, the problem is we haven't changed the capacitor size. We can still increase the size of the capacitor to maybe a lot larger, a thousand microfarads. So now, uh, with that, you see a straight line. This is your full wave rectified as well as smoothening part. These two elements, these two elements, the capacitor is used to. Um, smoothen a little bit uh, while you get those ripple effects and then the xenodiode is to fix it completely. So with the bridge, to summarize everything, uh, AC is converted to DC but it's a varying DC with big bumps uh, and then with the capacitor you reduce those big bumps to ripples uh, with the right size capacitor and then with the xenodiode you convert it or turn it into a straight fixed voltage, as simple as that. And that's your uh, full wave rectifier with the, with the smoothing effect of these two elements, capacitor and xenodiode.